Yo, episode 111 of Dragon Ball Super was actually, in my opinion, a pretty good episode. But before we even begin, let me just tell you this. I'm not ever going to say something is absolutely great or terribly bad on my channel without it being my honest and actual opinion. So with that out of the way, just know for me, guys, you're not going to get any type of BS reviews or something that I'm just going to say to make it sound better than what it actually is. I'm going to give you my real opinion. So this is going to be the first review I've done on this channel for episode 111 or anything in general. So episode 111... Dragon Ball Super Review, let's get it started. So just as I said in my pre-thoughts video, the episode starts off with Frieza giving Goku energy opposed to the cliffhanger that they left it on, which was going to make everybody think that Frieza was actually going to attack him. So Frieza gave Goku his energy, and he said all debts are now paid. So Frieza's like, look, I've done everything that you've done for me, we're on even terms, you know, we're going out from here. So, I really like the fact that they're emphasizing on, you know, Frieza's character a little bit. It's actually more intriguing than I thought. You know, they're actually, Frieza's actually saying to Goku, you know, I need you to continue to fight Jiren. So, he, he's, <laughs> he's indirectly giving Goku's orders, and it's, it's working in a way that's showing that, you know, we all have a bigger part to play here, and even though Goku right now is the MVP on Universe 7, Frieza, Frieza still has his own hidden agenda that he has. So I, I, kind of, I really like that aspect, but I'm going to get right to the part of the episode, not even just the part. They do this throughout the entire episode, and this was actually my least favorite aspect of the whole episode. So throughout the episode, Goku's doing this thing where he's just kind of like hiding behind rocks, watching Jiren do his thing, and you know, he's, he's just kind of self-commentating to himself about what's going on. He's not actually involved with anything. So I, I really dislike the fact that they have Goku doing this. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of it. Um, it even hits a point where I'll get to this. I'll get to this later on in the episode review, but it actually gets to a point where, where Jiren notices Goku and straight up is like yeah he's he's not a threat i'm not worried about this scrub he's he's nothing to me and when i get to this part of the episode you guys are going to probably think it's really funny if you've already seen it you're probably going to agree you guys probably didn't like it either if you did that's interesting but if not i'm glad we're on the same page with it so getting back to the episode frieza tells goku that fighting that beast jaren is something that goku should do because frieza himself wants to avoid it at this point, Frieza is pretty much about to dip off of the scene, but then before he goes, he asks Goku, Hey, did you hear what the gods were talking about above earlier? Goku, Goku answers saying no, and then Frieza reiterates saying, the string, that you, the string that you were showing earlier, apparently among the gods, it's called Ultra Instinct. And with that, that's when he leaves, and he leaves Goku to ponder about Ultra Instinct. And so that's when he's like, oh, okay, so... You know, if I can do that again, will I be able to beat Jaren? So now Goku knows what it's called, and that's when he begins to do the hiding behind the rocks while watching uh, Jiren and Hit go at it throughout the rest of the episode. And so the next scene that happens is, is showing Hit fighting, fighting Jiren, and immediately, you know, Jiren notices that Hit is using the time skip. He adapts to the time skip so well, it's almost a joke. It's like you're fighting somebody online in a fighting game, and it's, it's a scrub that's, you know, doing some sort of technique or some sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> how do I put it? Some sort of move that, you know, you're used to seeing, but he's doing an interesting pattern. And then now you're able to read the guy and, you know, you're able to body him straight up. So, getting past that, you know, Jiren and Hit are doing this nice little standoff. And everybody's kind of recognizing how Hit's actually doing pretty good against Jiren. Um, they're, 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 you know, they're talking about how good his skill is and that, you know... Jiren, however, is still going to have the upper hand. One of the things I do like is while Hit is fighting Jiren, they do begin to elaborate further on what, what Hit is doing and how he can hide in a separate space that he's created uh, by storing the time that he skipped. And so they say, like, in a real world, he leaves a phantom of himself, and that's how he's able to come on the other side and attack. And they, you know, they just explain pretty much how the time skip technique works. So I, I, I like that they're giving some, you know, depth to the time skip. I mean, they've done it before, but for them to do it again, for people who forgot how it works, it, it, it's very reassuring. But, you know, when you're seeing how Jiren is just catching on to this, he's just so well, and he's literally blocking every single attack. It just makes you realize, man, man that Jiren is a beast, dude. Like, this dude is not to be messed with. Like, before Hit was the one that was bodying Vegeta and making Goku 
you know, hit new heights. And, and, and now you see, you see hit just being thrashed. It's, it's just, it's really good, man. It, it's, it's really good. I really like it. During the battle, it, <laughs> hit is reiterating, he's, you know, he's reflecting to himself. He's like, man, so th these are the blows that Goku was taking from Jiren. So he's, 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 he's expressing to the world that, you know, Jiren is strong, he's recognizing his strength and that he's, he's not a joke. But Jiren interrupts Hit's thought process, saying, you, do you seriously intend to beat me? And Hit responds, that's my job. <laughs> I just, man, like, you can tell that Jiren is not here for the battle. Jiren is here to save the universe, to get this over with, and, you know, to go back home. He's, he's not worried about, you know, trying to fight and have a good time like, like Goku is. Jiren is strictly business, and, I, you know, I, I do like that about him. It, it shows that, you know, the people who are strongest in this, in this arc, in this battle, are not actually villains. There are other good characters just trying to do the right thing for their, for their respective universe. So, you know, I, I like that. Now the two are going blow to blow. They're explaining, you know, what the time skip attack is. Jaren is still owning Hit. I mean, you know, at this point, there's some pretty decent animation. It's not anything that's like, oh my god. But even still, I will say that the animation for this episode was satisfactory. There's even a few points where, you know, <laughs> uh, Hit goes in to sweep Jaren's feet. He misses, and then Jaren literally is jump roping on top of Hit, goes back, punches Hit in the face, and then Hit continues to try to do the time skip, but each attempt, of course, is countered by Jaren. But he, Hit continues to do it over and over and over and over, and it's at this point that he realized that Jaren has successfully adapted to the time skip. I mean, the scene here then just shows so many counters, and then it does get to this cool moment where, you know, Jaren's going pow, 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 and then the Hit's just taking the hits, and then Jaren sends them flying off with a kick, and then everybody's realizing, like, oh man, like, really, Hit's not getting any hits in on Jaren, and, and Jaren's countering every single, every single thing, but it's, it's at this moment that they're starting to figure out, you know, like, why does he keep using the time skip? if the time skip isn't working like what 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 sense does that make and then of course you know hit has a strategy behind this he's he's doing it to you know memorize the counter attack patterns that that Jaren is doing so much so that Jaren ends up getting irritated saying how many times are you going to continue to do this <laughs> so he's getting annoyed with the time skip then they do the scene one of the scenes that was annoying me the most, Goku hiding behind the rocks. But this is where it gets kind of cool. They introduce those two Namekians that are uh, that are in the battle. And then just like on the pregame Goku versus Jiren match, uh, me and my friend Alo the Bad Guy were discussing, you know, we felt that Gohan and Piccolo were going to take on the two Namekians. And sure enough, next thing you know, the two, the two Namekians send out a blast. Gohan and Piccolo come in to counter the blast that the two were sending. And then it shows the Namekians step in and try and charge off at Gohan and Piccolo. And then they're charging at them. Boom. Next scene. Vegeta's fighting Ribrian in his base form. They're in the middle of a key blast. He pushes her back. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why are they leaving her in? Like... Why are they trying to make this character relevant? Like, is she one of the new favorites of Akira Toriyama? Like, what's the point? I'm tired of seeing her. Fa I'm tired of seeing her fight, to be quite honest. So her and Vegeta get in a fist fight. He pushes her back. He punches her into a wall, and then her partner, uh, what's her name, Rosie, comes in to protect Ribrian. So she she deflects Vegeta back with the kick, and then Vegeta's firing key blast at those two. And now here's another part that did annoy me. After the rubble, they're not there, and Vegeta's like, where did they go? And they're literally hiding, like, right underneath him. So it's like, what, dude, I remember they were emphasizing so much on the Planet Namek Saga, you can sense energies. I mean, I granted, somebody's probably going to say they're hiding their key. 
but come on, bro. You can't sense these two girls right underneath you. They don't even express that they're trying to hide their key. So next up, he, he goes off looking for them or whatever. This gives the two girls, Rosie and Rebian, time to discuss what's happening. Uh, Rebian's starting to get her doubts. She's like, look, Universe 2, we're taking the most hits. We're losing the worst. Uh, you know, is this really a battle we're fighting? And then Rosie gives her a good, like, pimp smack to the face, you know, saying, hey, man, you got to get your head back in the game. Are you really underestimating the power of love? And, you know, Rebian gets really stoked up, and then she, her head's back in the game. Switch scenes again. Now Jaden's back to getting uh, in battle with Hit. It shows him knock Hit through through some mountains, through some rocks, and he falls. And then it, tra it transitions over to uh, uh, Kale, Kaba, and uh, Kalifla. Kalifla, however you want to say her name. They're over there. They're watching the battle. And Kalifla's like, look, let's let's get into this. Let's, you know, this is our chance to help Hit. And Kaba sticks his hand out saying, hey, you know, Hit has a plan. He's literally blocking every single one of the attacks. He must be waiting for the appropriate chance to strike back. And then sure enough, it switches back to Hit, saying that I've memorized all of his hits with the timing of my body. And then that's when he says, it's time for me to finish the job. And then he does his, his time skip attack. I forget, I forget the exact name of it. He does it in the Xenoverse. He sends the punch through. And then that awesome song plays. Jiren blocks it with his fist, and then Hit comes back with the time skip behind Jiren, and then he hits him, landing the fist on his chest and saying, I needed this one hit. This hit will bind you in a cage of time. And so you see that dent that's on Jiren's chest, and it sends Jiren flying back through the mountains, and he almost hits the edge of the arena. So at this point, Hit has done more to uh, Jiren than Goku did as far as pushing him back, getting him out of bounds. It emphasizes that Jiren is now at the end of the stage and it shows the dent in his chest disappear and it's actually permanently locking him in into the time skip technique. And so you can see like this purple aura around uh, Jiren and he, he literally can't move. It's like if you watched uh, or played any of the Sonic the Hedgehog games after Shadow the Hedgehog's introduced, dude does chaos control getting Jiren stuck in, stuck in the void, or the time skip in this case. Then it does the stupid thing where, oh, here's Goku again watching Jiren getting, getting uh, caught up by Hit's technique. Then it shows uh, Kaba, Kalifly, and Kale talking about, so this must be Hit's plan. This must be why he was telling us to, this this must be why Kaba was telling us to hold back. And then, of course, it switches over to the other characters discussing, you know, the reason why Hit kept doing this is because this is, in fact, his, his uh, trump card. This is the technique that Hit has been holding out for. And so, at this point, Hit yells, now's your chance. He's yelling it to his teammates, uh, Kabe Kalifla and uh, Kale. He tells them that, you know, at this point, you know, each of you have your roles to play. This is your chance. I'm thinking that when he says this is your chance, that the three are going to then go in and try and attack Jiren. No, I'm completely wrong. He tells them that that's when they start to have the conversation that while he's doing this, it is our turn to go in to defeat the other warriors while Hit is holding off the main warrior, Jiren. They do some interesting character reflection. Uh, you know, Champa is discussing with his his Kai and uh, his angel, and you know she's saying it appears that you know Jiren actually is trying to you know hold Hit frozen for the rest of the match. Champa does say something interesting that I thought was interesting at least. He was you know he was he was clarifying on Hit's character. He was like, that's really not Hit's style to want to you know work as a team he usually does everything by himself and I think it's at this point you know you realize that Hit really is Champa's favorite character uh, as far as when I say character I mean as far as player on a team uh, Champa has a lot of respect for Hit and you get to see that Champa's not always just yelling and saying stupid things he actually does have some respect for the fighters on his team whereas you think back to the the Universal the Universe 6 tournament he just he just demanding that they fight. So, anyways, it goes back to Jiren and uh, Hit. It now shows that 
Hit cannot hold Jiren back while using the time skip technique that he's done on him. Like literally during this whole thing, you're seeing Jiren struggle, but he is strutting forward towards Hit. So it's at this point, Hit's like, look, my move's not working. I'm gonna have to try and do something else. So Hit jumps in the air and he has the, the, the key in his hand and he's leaping towards Jiren and then boom. Next thing you know, <laughs> this is why this dude cannot be messed with, man. He blocks Hit with a glare. Like, he's looking at him, and he creates a barrier around him. Hit has the Key Blast in his hand, and Jiren now has him completely frozen with this barrier. To the point where he's able to unfreeze his own hand, grab the blast that is in Hit's hand, he's able to grab it, and then he's like, Ass an assassin's pride? And then he says, what rubbish, and he snaps, he snaps the Key Blast right in front of Hit. <laughs> It was at this point, Hit knew. <laughs> hit knew. It was, game, it was game over at this point. They go back to the angel saying, you know, Jiren is beyond comprehension. It means that Jiren possesses powers that oversee time itself. And everybody's like, are you telling me that, that <laughs> there's nothing that can stop Jiren's strength? And of course, you know, Jiren's god of destruction is just blowing him big he's just you know he's just having a good time talking about yeah nobody can touch him and so next thing you know it shows this i thought this was a pretty good animated scene it shows hit going in with some jabs trying to punch jaren jaren's just dodging him left and right left and right goes in with some counter punches and then he does that technique that he did with goku where his eyes turn red and then he's hitting him with simultaneous attacks that you can't even see cut over kaba's fighting a dude from Oh, what universe is it? This is the universe with the robots. Uh, what universe is that? Universe three? Ah, uh, no, not three. I don't remember. I'm not even gonna try to remember it right now because I I can't think. I'm so I'm so caught up into the episode. Uh, speaking of which, there's this stupid theory going around where they think everybody he's gonna fuse and they're gonna be that new character that is supposedly supposed to interrupt. But I digress. It goes back. Hit flies past Kaba and the person that he's fighting. Jiren appears right in front of him and then. While Hit is flying in the air, he sends out another Key Blast to finish Hit off. Boom! At this point, Hit has been eliminated. Hit appears back in the arena. I mean, not the arena. He appears back on the, uh, he's benched. And they actually did a pretty revealing point for Champa. You know, he tells him, you know, you did a good job. And Hit's like, yeah, the moment I couldn't land that one hit, I knew, I knew it was game over. But Champa says something that's pretty nice. He's like, your defeat won't be in vain, and I'm sure your work out there had an impact on Kaba and the others. So, you know, it's it's very interesting to see Champa nice. I just always feel like he's a jerk. But, you know, Vados brings things back to attention, saying, look, Hit getting defeated, this is an absolute, this puts us in a tight situation. So, you know, it's from here that, you know, Hit's loss or Hit being defeated is what sets the, sets Kaba in motion, wanting to get things done, and then boom. Another tick has gone by. It's halftime now. So the uh, great priest does this thing where he changes the sky from being purple to green to sim you know to symbolize that it's half it's halftime. It's time to get things going. Man, I I, I think I've been talking like just nonstop for like 12 minutes now. <laughs> um, this episode, I, I really, I really think it's good. I really think it's good because it it, it shows the confidence of of Jiren. Because the next scene literally shows Jiren telling Topo and uh, Dispo that he's gonna leave the rest for them. And then it does the scene that I was telling you about earlier, where he's like, "You two take care of the rest because the other fighters that I was supposed to take care of." And then he looks over behind the rocks and he sees Goku. He sees Goku all beaten up and bad looking at him. He says, are already taken care of. <laughs> and then he goes into his meditative, this meditative state. He, he, he's meditating now in the, in the middle of the match. He is not worried about anybody else. And so everybody's like, oh man, that's such a grand display of power. He is so confident in his strength that now he's not worried about fighting anybody else. He's meditating. Beerus calls the dude a bastard. He's like, nobody else is worth fighting. 
And so it does this cool thing where it's showing the rocks snap in front of him, and then Goku's like, you're saying I'm not worth fighting you like this? Boom, dude. I'm telling you, like, I don't know why they were showing Goku fall. I'm just, I really don't like it. It, it. it really annoyed me. So from here, you have the robots trying to fight. One of them stands up. He approaches Topo and Dispo at the same time. They charge, and they apparently they had this plan all along to go after Jiren. This is just merely plot play. This is to simply show how powerful Jiren is while he's meditating. So when the dude tries to attack Jiren while he's floating and meditating, he gets pushed back. And then that's when Dispo goes to explain that you're not worthy to fight Jiren because if you can't even break through the barrier, this is when Topo comes in and he's saying, if you can't get through you know, Jiren's barrier, you never stood a chance to fight him in the first place. And then it shows Jiren meditating. So it does this thing where... Goku's like Jiren and then it, it, it shows that you know the time has changed it is benched and them showing that whole barrier thing is obviously going to be the the next point where you know eventually Goku's going to be able to master ultra instinct and he's probably going to have awaken awaken Jiren from that from that state or maybe maybe they're going to have maybe they're going to pull a Vegeta all right. And what do I what do I mean by that? Maybe Jiren's gonna be meditating, and while he's meditating, they're gonna have Vegeta be the one to wake him up. Vegeta's gonna get defeated. Goku's gonna go in, go for the win, and you know what? I I can't say it's that simple. I really feel like Frieza is gonna be an integral part to winning this. Frieza hasn't even gone golden yet. Well, actually, he did. For a quick, for a quick moment, but I really feel like they're gonna make they're gonna make Frieza integral to winning this. But anyways, I can save my future comments. I've already bantered on long enough, uh, kind of explaining the episode to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If I were to give this episode a rating, this is something I want to do for my reviews. Um, you know, let's do a one out of five rating, star rating. If I were to give this episode a rating, I would say it's a three point five. So, you know, definitely not the best, not the worst. It was, you know, right in the middle, and it did have a few good parts. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It was actually better than I thought. I thought the animation was going to be way worse. I thought it was just going to be a garbage fight altogether. Um, personally, I think the Jiren versus Hit Match was better than the Vegeta hit versus Hit Match. So, you know, that, that was kind of what I was expecting. Then they show the next episode preview. And it's, it's, it's uh, you know, a Saiyan's Vow, Vegeta's Resolution. I'll kind of get into the episode breakdown for that, too. Uh, but not on this one. Either way, guys, uh, you know, I enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. I hope this wasn't too long for you. I just really wanted to do it in a way of which not only am I discussing what's, uh, what's happening in the episode, but I really wanted to share my thoughts on each part just so I can kind of be there with you guys while you're listening. So... If you guys have any comments as to what you would like to see changed or, you know, maybe thoughts or things you'd like to see me do differently, please leave that in the comment section down below. Um, I'm looking forward to next week's episode. There will be another review. I plan on doing a review for every single episode that airs, but um, also, you know, I have to get this out there. Uh, Since you being Cartel might be obviously named after Dragon Ball, but this channel is not a Dragon Ball only channel. This channel is for all things anime plus real talk and I'm gonna make a video saying you know what is Sensu Bean Cartel and that's gonna explain the purpose of this channel more thoroughly to everybody so you can kinda of understand what this channel is actually about it's it's gonna be more than just Dragon Ball Super reviews and you know other anime reviews it's, it's, it's gonna be more than that and I want you guys to understand that you know I am gonna be able to add input maybe to each and one of you's lives who's listening maybe I'll be able to offer advice to people and you know it actually be for situations that they can identify with but that I'll save that for another video as always guys once again I'm Haikusen and uh, this has been you know another review on SBC actually the first review on SBC and uh, looking forward to many more I'll catch you guys on the next one later